Been volunteer well, I volunteered for three or four years, and then I was hired in 2003. So it's been it's been quite a while. I enjoy every minute of it with Snooty. He's the only one that can get me up at five in the morning. We have to prepare the food in the morning. He eats two cases of lettuce. He eats carrots. We cut them in a special way. Sweet potatoes are cut a certain way. Uh, cabbage, he loves cabbage. He doesn't care how you cut the cabbage, just give it to him. Loves cabbage. He eats three pounds of that, three pounds of kale, two pounds of broccoli. He loves broccoli. Sometimes he'll pass on some of it, just like us. He has his likes and dislikes at certain times, and he wants his kale at a certain time and his lettuce at a certain time. Snooty is very fussy. We feed only what the vet tells us to feed uh, in the amounts. To Snooty weighs 1,020 pounds now. One time he was up to almost 1,300 pounds. So the vet does not want Snooty overweight, especially at his age. They bring them here to get fat. Lowry Park makes them well, and we make them fat. And they... Uh, they do a good job of that. We have two now. One is Ace, and he was found in the Peace River. And he will be with us sometime this summer. He's going to be released. Now, little Myakamore, he was found in the Myaka River. He's going to stay with Snooty for a year. He's very small. He weighed 290 pounds when he came in. We expected he's gained a considerable weight now. So Snooty has had, I think this will be the 29th animal over since 1995. Oh, they don't argue, they don't fight. Uh, that's why they're called gentle giants, because they're very gentle. They wouldn't harm anything. Oh my gosh, Snooty's a good share of my life. Uh, I just wake up at five o'clock and I'm anxious to get here to see Snooty. And I realize that there's a lot of people that would like to do that. They would like the job of feeding Snooty, but it's not just feeding the animal. You have to take care of other things behind the scene. You have to prep the food and you have to clean up. It's just, it just a joy to work, yes. I'm sure uh, if he, they, they have very poor eyesight. He might not recognize me personally, but he recognizes my voice. I can say, come here, Snoots, in the med pool, and he'll come swimming over to me. Marilyn is the director, and she has a great crew. I have people that come in when I'm here in the mornings that help me prepare food. They know just how to do it, and it's a labor of love. We will be here from 10 to 2. We're going to have constant presentations. Now, I'm thankful that there's a lot of people here that are very capable of doing presentations. Uh, everybody enjoys seeing Snooty, but the, we enjoy working with him even more. He knows that something's going on because when he sees a lot of people around his med pool and coming and going, he knows it's either a party or he's getting an exam, mm -hmm. which he's not thrilled with, but. He, he has two a year, and he's very healthy. He's in great health for 66 years of age. 
Well, uh, the population, we lose 10% of the population, I've heard, every year. And manatees, we want them to be around a long time. They're on the endangered list, and we hope they stay there. Uh, between the boats and the pollution and taking away their habitat, which is a big problem for manatees, um, they, they just need all the help we can give them. Oh, he is the official mascot of Manatee County. Everybody loves Snooty, and they relate to the fact that he's being protected. All manatees should be protected. And he shows people how lovable manatees are. They're not vicious. They don't bite. They don't chase people. They're very lovable. So it's very important we take care of the manatee population. We don't want to lose that. Yes, he has, and I've had people tell me that they saw him when he first came here in 1949. He was at, uh, well, the museum was over on the river, and he was there, just a small manatee, but he's made a big, big impression on Bradenton. Uh, he's the official mascot, and well, he should be. My dedicated group of volunteers behind me and we are here to celebrate Snooney's birthday and promote marine conservation and research. So our MOAT's mission is to promote marine conservation through education and research. So I work with the education team to actually bring the aquarium to others, uh, especially here on Snooty's birthday party so that we can teach people a little bit about what's in the ocean and how we are studying it. Sure, we have lots of interactive exhibits. Uh, of course, the favorite one, which the animals have not gone in yet, is our touch tank, which is over here. It is a 100-gallon saltwater aquarium featuring live interactive animals actually from Sarasota Bay. And we have these animals, and kids can actually touch them throughout the day. They have their own aquarium system plumbed into our truck. We also have some different displays. Here is our invertebrate tank table and echinoderm table which features some molts and sheds of different lobsters, crabs, and sea stars that we have here. Over here we have our shell collection. As you know shell collecting is a very very big thing here in Sarasota and Manatee counties. So we have all of the different shells people may find on their local beaches as well as some beautiful coral species because Moat does a lot with coral research especially down in the Florida Keys. Uh, it's a really wonderful way to connect a lot of people to the ocean. It's really surprising how many people live right here in our um, Florida areas that have never actually been to the ocean. And a lot of people make connections with these things. It's a very um, intimate kind of connection that people feel with these animals and also what we're doing. And it really helps them to understand what's going on in the ocean which will later help them go out and protect the ocean. Sure, so this is our kind of showpiece. This is our 1,000 gallon saltwater aquarium, which features coral reef fish, which you would see in our Florida Keys, which Moat does a lot of research in. And we also have Florida game species. We have the Florida pompano, and we have the uh, red drum, or red fish, that we have in our local waters. And it is a really, really big display and kids love to interact with it. So this is our sea turtle display. This is all new this year. Uh, we have a sea turtle display, which talks a little bit about our nesting loggerheads, which are the most prevalent species that we have in Sarasota and Manatee counties. This is a real uh, shell or carapace of a loggerhead turtle. And we talk a little bit about Shelly and the dangers that Shelly and face uh, and faces like our tangling here. We also actually, this is from one of our moat staff members. This is what you may see on the beach that indicates a turtle has nested on the beach. We also have a model of the turtle's eggs. So turtles usually lay around 100 eggs and this kind of shows what they look like in the sand as well as real skeletons or skull, 
there's shells, and this is our bone table right down here. And this features real bones of animals that we've studied. We have a dolphin here, its skeleton, and its spinal cord. And we have, of course, today, a manatee skull. So kids, they get to see Snooty, but they actually get to touch a real manatee sc um, skull as well. I really want people to understand the ocean. The ocean marine biology may not be a thing for everybody, but it is through understanding and making those connections with your surrounding environment that we learn to preserve and protect. So that's really what I want people to know is that MOAT and other organizations like South Florida Museum are out there, so go out and explore your outdoors, appreciate what's outside of you. You know, the staff, the volunteers, our board of directors, everybody loves having this event. And the community, we have great community participation this year, not only from visitors, but our community partners that also teach about wildlife awareness, such as Sea to Shore Alliance and, and uh, even mosquito control. They are wild animals as well. So we have a great variety of educational activities and fun for everybody. Plus the museum's open. Well. You know, Snooty's been part of the museum since nearly day one. Just nine months, he was uh, nine months into his life, he came here, and he's been a, he's been like everybody's pet. And I think that, you know, people love their pets. And Snooty is the mascot, the official mascot of Manatee County, and um, his endearing personality really lends itself to people just falling in love with him. And that's why people are here. And we love it that people can come not only see Snooty, but take part in, uh, in uh, the rest of the museum's venues. Well, first and foremost, we're a natural and cultural history museum. And in addition to that, we also have a great digital planetarium. And then, of course, the Manatee Aquarium. Uh, the planetarium will take you to the universe and beyond, and then also lets us look back on Earth as an ecosystem. Our Natural and Cultural History Museum is a, is a big two-story museum that talks about early Florida history. We take you through the geology of Florida, how humans came here, and then into local Manatee County history. And then down the road, you can go down to see Snooty, and you, we have the rehab animals. These are animals that are permitted by U.S. Fish and Wildlife. They've come in to us either orphaned or um, sick or hit by a boat strike and they stay here in a safe place, get fat, and then we release them back out into the wild. And Snooty's their mentor, so it's good for him too. He's had 28 different companions over the years. Well, we want people to feel, to feel part of the South Florida Museum. We're a community treasure, not just Snooty, but just the fact that we um, hold the keys to the community's family album, and that includes the geology, includes the universe, it includes the manatees, the living collections that we have. Um, and we, we are appreciative that people just want to come in and learn and be a part of it. So we, we have two places we're going to sing happy birthday today at noon. Uh, well, first is down in the plaza with everybody um, that's down there looking at Snooty in the underwater viewing and then upstairs in the aquarium we'll be leading happy birthday as well so everybody can sing happy birthday to Snooty and um, we'll wish him many more years in, in, this in his entering his 67th year we're pretty proud of him um, and, and really the message that Snooty brings us is that manatees can live long and if we protect the environment and protect their home the waters, the, the quality of the water, the boating, how safe we are out on the boating, um, we can let manatees live a long time.
just to get our name out to the community uh, about Bishop Animal Shelter and the animals that we have up for adoption and for pet awareness. If people have questions about pets, hopefully we can help them out so they don't have to give their pets away. We are uh, an adoption facility, so our main service is getting animals into the shelter that people can no longer take care of and rehoming them for an adoption fee to the right home. Um, we have cats and dogs. Um, then when people have questions about animal resources, we give them numbers for our other facilities if they need help with spay-neutering or shots or anything like that. We are at 5718 21st Avenue West, which is right across the street from Blake Hospital. So they just come in, they can look around at their leisure, look at cats and the dogs, we'll get them out so they can socialize with them and see if it's the right animal for them. We have right now 146 cats in adoption and 52 dogs in adoption. We have four pound dogs, up to 90 pound dogs, four months old, up to 12 years old. Um, I work in the kennels with the dogs and the cats, you know, um, spend some time with them, get them out in the play yards, feed them, you know, bathe them, play with them, kind of get them socialized, get them, show them that they're loved, you know, they're, they're there and we're there to take care of them. August 23rd, we're having an adoption event. It's called Parachute for Paws. And what it's going to happen is from 10 to 12 at Bishop Animal Shelter, the shelters are all coming together and the rescues to do a two-hour adoption event. At the end of the event, around noon, we are going to see Commissioner John Chappie and Assistant State's Attorney Lisa Chittero uh, skydive from an airplane and land on Bishop property to make awareness to the animal welfare organizations. Sure, um, our phone number is 941-792-2863 and our website is www dot bishop dash spca dot org So Save the Manatee Club is a non-for-profit organization and we're located in Maitland, which is close to Orlando, Florida. Um, we do everything from helping with rescues, rehabilitation and release of manatees back into the wild, as well as education and public awareness about manatees. It's really important to educate the public about manatees because manatees are endangered and we don't have that many left. A lot of people don't know a whole lot about manatees, so we want to make sure we get the word out there about them. We're going to be the voice for the manatees and you know, have everyone know that they're awesome animals and help us support them. So manatees can actually join Save the Manatee Club and become a member. They can adopt a manatee from us. It's $25 a year and they're gonna get a certificate of adoption for a real manatee. Most of them are out in Blue Spring or Crystal River. Um, also, just really practice responsible boating, go slow in manatee areas because these are very slow moving creatures. Don't discard your fishing line irresponsibly. Be careful where you leave your trash. These are all things how you can help the manatees. So today we're here at South Florida Museum celebrating Snooty's 66th birthday. And we're here with all these other exhibitors that care about manatees and about the environment. The Save the Manatee Club has been part of that for a long time. And we're always happy to be here and partner with South Florida Museum to raise awareness about the manatees. So to find out more information about Save the Manatee Club, people can visit our website at www.savethemanatee.org and they can find everything out about our adopt a manatee program as well as getting more information about manatees and other ways to help them. My secret is that I got my start in the museum business with Snooty. I volunteered here at South Florida Museum feeding Snooty to distract the divers who had to clean the tank in the morning. Of course, I instantly fell in love both with Snooty and museums. So I worked at the South Florida Museum for about six years and now I'm at the Florida Maritime Museum, which 
continues that whole water heritage, history, environment, boating, um, perfect tie-in for Florida, and all of that's really important to our ecosystems, our history, and life today. The Florida Maritime Museum is very unique. It's in a historic fishing village. One of the oldest fishing villages still remaining in Florida. It's still a functioning fishing village. That's the main um, way that people make a living there. It's in the old schoolhouse. So the building's over 100 years old. It was a schoolhouse, but also it was a community center. They had square dances there. They had weddings there. Um, they had holiday parties there. And it was even a hurricane shelter. There was a bad hurricane in 1921, and that building provided shelter. So it's very important to the people of Cortez. Um, after it was a school, an artist lived there for a number of years. It was his home and his studio, Robert Saylor's. Very eccentric, talented man. We've got some of his stuff. And so anyway, after he passed away, the building was up for sale and the residents of Cortez really rallied to save it to turn it into a museum. And that's what they managed to do. We have a Florida focus, so we have some stuff that focuses on Florida maritime history, basically from Native Americans to present day statewide. And then we do have the lens of Cortez um, that has provided a lot of the family stories, history of the building, and a lot of the artifacts we have are from Cortez, even if they're representative of things that were used statewide. Um, we have a boat that was built by one of the old Cortez fishermen in 1930s, a lot of old tools, photos, we do. Actually today, this behind me you can see, we're promoting an upcoming exhibit called Maritime Mythologies. It's actually a three exhibit series. And the first exhibit is Creatures of the Deep, so focused on sea monsters from around the world. Um, and that opens in October and we have a whole menu of programming affiliated to that. Lectures, Kids Day, Costume Party event. Um, November we have our annual Boatyard Bash, which is a great event. We have live music all day, a movie in the field after dark, lots of boats, all handmade boats. So if you're curious of how you could make a boat, come see what other people are doing in their own garages. Um, art vendors, it's a great event. I'd say there's two of the easiest ways would be look at our website, floridamaritimemuseum.org, or like us on Facebook. We post all of our upcoming events on Facebook and lots of fun pictures and stuff in between. We love you, Snooty. Happy birthday. Many, many more. television show called Animal Outtakes and we were honored to have some unprecedented views of Snooty. I even got to kiss him and he winked at me. Any man that winks at me, I'll come to his birthday party. But Dante's Den is making its preview here. It is the first assisted living facility for dogs being built in the United States. We're being built on 50 acres in Mayaca City. We'll also have a rescue component and the military pups. When our soldiers are deployed, they can bring the dogs to us and we will take care of them during the deployment and then bring them back to them. My husband and I traveled extensively in our careers and every time we left I said the same thing. What would happen to our precious dogs if something happened to us on the trip? And we have wonderful friends that were quite willing to take our dogs but you know what? They wouldn't spoil them the way that we would want them spoiled. So we decided to do it our way. And our way is to build dens, rooms that are eight by 10. They will have their own porch. They'll have their own garden area. But then they will share in a swimming pool, specially designed for dogs. They will have massage and energy treatments. And we're building a full state-of-the-art hospital on the grounds where we can do critical care surgery if we need to. Yes, we feel that it is, but I can assure you that we did not do it to be the unique one of a kind, to be the first. We did it because there's a need, and if I have that need, I know everybody else has that need, and we want to give the owners and the parents of these wonderful dogs peace of mind. Well, the easiest way would be to contact us through dantesden.org. And remember that Dante is spelled D-O-N because he was named for my husband. And you can also call us at our number 941-545-8387.
I would like to say go Snooty go and we love you and have 66 more. It's important for us to be here because it's an important event for the community. The South Florida Museum is a really unique learning institution that we should celebrate having every day. In this case, we celebrate it once a year when Snooty turns 66 and we're just thrilled to be a part of it. This is our fossil fun zone. We bring in fossil rock from one of our mines, in this case from the Four Corners Mine in Duet. It's real rock from the phosphate mine, comes loaded with actual fossilized shark's teeth, and we encourage the kids to jump in, get dirty, and do some real fossil hunting right here in downtown Bradenton. How can you not be excited about a manatee that's made it to 66 and he's still feeling good? We should all be so lucky, right? So I, I think everyone just, just flocks around Snooty because he's a wonderful celebrity, a wonderful character, and this is their hometown museum. And so a chance to get together and celebrate it. Most of these folks are local. It's a good time of year to bring the local crowd out to celebrate a hometown jewel. They can do that by going to mosaicco.com slash Florida, and they can find our different contact numbers on there and ways to reach us. We're real easy to track down, and we're always eager to hear from anybody. We enjoy taking part in all sorts of events out in the community, and so we welcome those calls. Hello, my name is Bill Manning. Uh, I'm working today as a volunteer with the uh, museum and I am in charge of the plaza uh, today and trying to make sure to coordinate all the volunteers and to get the kids involved with the, uh, the aspect of Snooty. I'll be holding a little contest, trivia contest in a little bit, trying to get the kids more involved. And uh, this is one of the things I've done for years. Uh, I've enjoyed working with the museum. It's a wonderful thing to do. And if you have the free time, please feel free to come and volunteer at the museum and sign up. And if you like it, please join as a member. Snooty to Manatee County is a world, representa world representative of Manatee County. Snooty was brought back here in uh, late 50s, early 60s, and he's been here ever since. He's uh, been an attraction with a museum. Uh, Manatee County was one of the first counties in Florida to have its own museum and planetarium. It was unheard of. Only larger cities had had that. But in Manatee County, uh, there was a group, core group of people that pulled this off in the 50s and 60s. And it was just amazing to w considering what it's grown to today. The membership and the amount of people that come to see this program each year increases probably 10 to 15 percent. I volunteer here because uh, I enjoy uh, being out in the crowd and being able to help people and I enjoy the educational aspect of Manatee County and the fact that they have such a world class uh, place like this in Manatee County because a lot of other counties that have more money than us don't have the facilities that we have so it's quite an honor to be a part of it.
Well, this is, like you said, Judy's 66th birthday party. He turns 66 on Monday, but this is the day that everybody comes out. We've already had hundreds of people inside the museum, but of course out in the plaza is where the real fun and the magic happens. Uh, in about 45 minutes, we're going to sing Happy Birthday. Right now we have the Motley Crue Sea Shanty Singers singing, and they're going to kick off Snooty's birthday style, Sea Shanty style. Um, but we have games and activities for kids all over the place that are engaging them with nautical science and what it's like to be a sailor in marine biology. So really fun activities for the whole family. Well, you know, everybody loves Snooty. And when, you know, like you said, that the families, they come and they're introducing their kids for the first time to Snooty, but likely that grandparent with them saw Snooty when he was in the old tank. So generations are sharing this together. And as a way to capture that this year, we have a Snooty scrapbook where people can write down their favorite Snooty memory or something that they uh, they personally love about him. And we're putting it in a big scrapbook together so that we can hold on to that. We also have a Snooty mural where people can draw Snooty's environment and uh, really capturing the effect that he's had on everyone in Bradenton. Sure, well, we have our typical museum um, uh, planetariums and aquariums going on, so people can go inside and they can experience that. But in addition, we have um, activities in marine biology, on sailing, on navigation, uh, of course, the carnival games to, for everyone to play. We have a giant inflatable ship where kids can climb the mast and, and slide down. Um, so the activities are really driven to show people what uh, quality of education they can receive if they come inside the museum. They can investigate our shells, they can investigate our artifacts and our fossils. So both inside and outside, it's a very rich engagement for people with the collections of our museum. Absolutely, we really do offer a very wide variety. Uh, if you know, if you have families, Family Nights is the key program for you to keep your eye on. It's the first Saturday of every month. And this upcoming Family Night on August 2nd is Family Reading Festival. So the idea is that uh, reading is fun. Reading is something that families can do together every day and every night. So we're going to have authors here to talk about their books and families here to engage in activities. But then we also have the Think and Drink Science program, which is engaging uh, adults, Think and Drink. So we, we do have a bar and uh, we set that up so that people can get really uh, engaged with the conversation. We have scientific lectures on a wide variety of topics from geology to astronomy, physics, chemistry, you name it. And then, but it's, it's in such a way that it's meant to be informal, that people can really ask those hard questions to the scientists themselves. Uh, we also have Film Friday, so for the culture geeks out there who like their film, we have a, an amazing lineup of films right now called Movies and Music, where um, we have a concert for an hour before the film, and then there's a film on um, kind of the history, documentaries on music, um, some really cool lineups. We actually have one on the Ramones that's in a couple of weeks, so, you know, very poignant with the timing right now, just to really celebrate the musicians that have come and how each of them have changed musical history. So, you know, that's something we do on Friday nights. So between the science lectures and the family nights and the film nights, there literally is something for everyone. The best way to do that is to go to our website. Our website is really rich, full of things. Each one of our different programs has its own page, so you can look at the dates, you can look at details, you can even buy tickets online. But of course, if there's ever a question, you can call us. We have program guides that people can pick up and stick to their refrigerator. Uh, so there's lots of different ways they can keep up to date with our programs. Well, um, at the moment, we've got Snooty up at his feeding station, but we also have um, my Acklemore, which is one of our rehabilitation manatees, an ace. And right now, they're all grazing on um, kale. Uh, though when the other manatees come up, Snooty tends to move away. Come here, buddy. It's OK. Normally, um, younger manatees will uh, follow the older ones around. That's how they learn. So that's no different here than it would be out in the wild. Um, well, it's really what we want them to do is to not mimic Snooty's behavior. It's essential that what they learn to do is be a manatee so that they're prepared for that when they're released. So differently than Snooty, where we hand feed him for presentations, we don't do that with the rehab animals. Um, they are fed through EEDs, environmental enrichment devices. The, they graze on the surface, um, but we don't reward them when they try to mimic, mimic Snooty's behavior. So that's important. 
Um, we really want them to be well prepared when they're released. It depends on the age of the animal when it comes into captivity and the condition. Um, in the case of Ace, he was 700 pounds when he came into us, and the ideal rela release weight is really around 800. So he's right there at that weight right now, but he's a cold stress survivor, um, which means they may wait until winter to release him. Little Myaclamore was only 290 pounds, so he was much, much smaller. So he may not even be ready for release um, in 2015. It might not be until 2016 before he goes out. And that's a decision that's made by par the Manatee Partnership um, Vet Committee. Um, they come here for lots of reasons. The two we happen to have right now are for cold stress. Manatees can't stand to be in water colder than 68 degrees, and both of them were in that kind of situation. Um, but we've also had animals that were entangled in crab trap lines, are uh, victims of, of boat strikes. So the reasons vary, um, but depending on the time of the year, we, saw, we also had situations with red tides. So it could be any one of those four um, conditions that usually bring them into captivity. No, um, really, um, that may be part of it, but, but the bigger reason is that there's only three uh, manatee hospitals that are for critical care um, in the state of Florida which means in the United States as a whole. And sometimes they need room for more um, animals that maybe are in worse condition than the two that we have right now. So they're able to move those animals into a second stage facility to provide hospital room. And at the same time, they know that they're gonna have an older companion. So it works both ways. Well, his, today is still his usual meal. So he's going to get his romaine lettuce. He'll get kale, um, broccoli, um, hopefully by the end of the day, some cabbage, and carrots, and sweet potatoes. And the carrots and sweet potatoes are really conditioning foods um, when he behaves in a way that we ask him to. Um, and we do give him an apple a day, and that's really the uh, manatee care specialist time to sort of interact with Snooty and, and make sure that he's um, as well and healthy as we think that he is. He'll probably do a little nose wiggle for us now because carrots is one of his favorites. Yep, there he goes. And that's a demonstration of the prehensile nose. Um, manatees are most closely related to elephants. So whereas elephants have this long trunk that they can use to uh, pick up their food, manatees have a sh much shorter version of that, but you can see how that upper lip can work and accommodates them for grabbing food. Here we go, Snooty, wanna try another one? The whiskers on the very end of his nose are called vibrissae. And they operate much the way our fingers do. That is their sense of touch. Um, about 50% of a manatee's brain is really uh, geared for touch. Much of the water that they're found in is turbid or murky. So it wouldn't be practical for them to be able to see or smell um, with their head underwater. So touch is really what's valuable to them. So that's what these, uh, the purpose of those little whiskers on the end. It is known that manatees can have uh, fat around their heart. And so our vet is very conscientious and really wants us to adhere to a pretty strict uh, uh, diet for him. But that being the case, on his birthday, we learned a long time ago that Snooty has a sweet tooth. So we do have a volunteer that creates a cake for him that provides him with um, some cabbage and s some things that he doesn't normally get in his daily diet, like a little bit of strawberries and some pineapple juice. He feels more vulnerable when the other manatees are on either side of him, so he sometimes won't put himself into a situation where they can poke at him or tickle him. And that's the same thing that's those whiskers trying to get familiar and say, hey, look at me, I'm over here, come interact with me. You do have a generation gap. Our, our rehab animals right now are somewhere between two and four, and then Snooty's gonna be 66, so. Um, Snooty will play with the larger ones, particularly like Ace is more his size right now, so he's more of a playmate than little my um, And both of the, them are growing, but my Aclamore especially since he's so small, so he really is pretty food focused. Uh, but they'll hug and they'll roll around and, and sort of uh, not chase each other, but follow each other. Um, and Snooty will do that for a while, and then after a point, you know, he kind of gets tired and just wants to go to the back and take a nap. Well, scientifically, we may not know a lot of things until after he's gone, but in the, in the interim, what we've learned is that when manatees are protected against the cold, um, red tide, and when we're careful, you know, about boating or fishing, we don't know how long a manatee li can live. We know they can live up to 66. They're hardy animals. 
and generally um, if there is a problem and it's caught relatively soon, they'll heal from it. So um, one of the things we know is that they, they can be with us for a really long time if we pay special attention to that. We know that manatees are trainable. Um, Snooty um, has worked with some of the, the trainers and researchers at Mode over the years. Um, because they are part of the endangered species um, status, that means that not very many manatees statewide, worldwide, um, can be trained. Snooty's uh, one of the manatees that has been, and a lot of what we've been able to learn about manatees' visual acuity, acuity their ability to hear, um, even vocalizations has come from um, the research animals. So he has been able to participate in that for many years. Well, really, as far as social um, goes, manatees live in what herds are what are called loose communities. So they're not in family pods. They don't stay with the same group. Um, they'll just sort of hang out with each other. Um, but it's not um, a well-knit or close kind of operation. It's really just a group that would find a good place to eat or where there's warm water, and then a couple might spin off and hang out with a different group, you know, the next day. Um, so it's very different kind of social stratus. Um, he really likes crunchy things. Manatees are meant to eat um, seaweed and crunchy foods. That's why they only have flat molars in the back of their teeth and nothing to bite with. Um, so for him, I mean, he loves celery, but it doesn't have any food value in it. So we try to give him things that let him crunch, like the sweet potato and the carrots. There we go, good boy. Come on. They communicate with each other? They do. Um, it sounds like a high-pitched squeak or a chirp, and it's the kind of noise that'll travel well through water, particularly salt water. So um, that we can hear. Uh, when we're in the water with them. We do have an underwater mic that's not on at the moment, but um, sometimes we can hear them that way. Everything right now is uh, status quo. Um, you know, we are part of the Manatee Rehabilitation Partnership, and that will continue, um, we hope, for quite a while. And we think the companionship provides him with an opportunity to interact with manatees. Even though he's so imprinted on by people, we think it's been really healthy for him to have other manatees in the tank with him. Um, well, they're not intended to see well. As I mentioned, most of the water they're in is uh, murky. They have what's called a nicotating eyelid, sort of a clear, semi-clear lid that goes over their eyes. Um, as close as our vet can tell, his eyes don't look any different than other manatees he's seen. So, you know, I, I don't think that uh, the studies have gone deeply into aging manatees since he's sort of the manatee at this point. Want some broccoli? Want something healthy? No, we don't. Brock? Ah, bad idea. Not in the mood for that right now. Kill. No, he ate. I wasn't sure he might. Sometimes he spits it out when he sees the camera there. Yeah, you lost part of it, but that's okay. Uh, did it, can you sense vibration in the water? Yeah, yeah. Um, they have the, those hairs or vibrissae all, all over their entire body, but the ones that are on the body are much finer. And so it's believed that possibly the hairs on their body help them with water currents, temperatures, and other, mm. other activity in the water. Well, I think, you know, what... What's important to both um, his caretakers and the museum as a whole is, you know, South Florida Museum made so far a 66-year commitment to taking care of an animal that's turned out to be um, Manatee County's mascot for many years. And to be able to celebrate his 66th birthday or the 67th e each year, each day that he's with us um, makes it more exciting and more valuable. Um, for us to be in the position of being the first uh, facility to be able to captively hold a manatee for an extended period of time, I think says a lot for the museum and the care that Snooty's had for the past 66 years. So we're very proud of that.
everybody to Snooty's 66th birthday. Did you sing already, right? All right, well, he's well celebrated. I'm Bryn Ann, and I'm the executive director here at the South Florida Museum. I want to welcome you all on this hot but very good day to celebrate Snooty's birthday. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Jackie Barron with the Mosaic Company. They're our presenting sponsor this year for this festival, and we are going to announce the birthday card contest winners. We appreciate everybody who, who took the time to make a card. Um, and we have a few winners here, so we uh, will honor them. Thank you so much, Brennan. Thank you to everyone who submitted an entry. This is one of the best parts of the annual snooty tradition. We're now 66 years in, and we're gonna hope for a lot more. We'll start, we'll go there, we'll say that much. These are, the entrants are from pre-K through sixth grade, and we received cards from all over the state. And we selected first through third place winners in each age category, as well as honorable mentions. We wanna start off, of course, by thanking our panel of esteemed judges, including the museum's summer science camp director, Sarah Hammock, education editor for the Bradenton Herald, Tony Witt, and museum supporters, Carrie Yearwood and Leah Witt. So without further ado, we'll kick off our announcing our winners. We will begin with our awards for the card contest. Two cards were deemed as honorable mentions from all of the entries. Our first honorable mention is preschooler Tiana Sutton. Tiana, are you here? There she is. Congratulations, Tiana. You see her little t-shirt says, girls make better ninjas. I like that. Our second honorable mention is second grader Kelly Winfield. Kelly, are you here? We also added a very special family award that is being given for not one child, but two siblings who each created a very nice birthday card to wish Snooty a happy 66th. The Family Honorable Mention Award goes to Jaden and Jacob Klusacek. Sorry about that. Are the Klusaceks here? Oh, we're sorry we didn't get them, but that's wonderful. The whole family took part. They're in second and fourth grade. Now for our third place winners. The Pre-K and Kindergarten Third Place Award goes to Julia Fernandez. Julia, are you here? Is Julia here? Congratulations to Julia. We'll have to catch up with her later. The first and second grade third place award goes to Shelby Kovach. Shelby, are you here? Shelby Kovach. Congratulations, Shelby. The third and fourth grade third place award goes to Maddox Brown. Maddox, are you here? The fifth and sixth grade third place award goes to Hannah Sundriel. Hannah, are you here? And now our second place winners. The pre-kindergarten and kindergarten second place award goes to Wiley Joyce. Yay, Wiley! Congratulations, those are some super cool shades too there, hon. The first and second grade second place award goes to Gabrielle Bowen. Is Gabrielle here? Here she comes. Yay, Gabrielle, come on up. The third and fourth grade second place award goes to Autumn Wild Group. Did I say that right, honey? Wild Group? Good. Congratulations. And the fifth and sixth grade second place award goes to Dana Young. Is Dana here? Oh, here she is. And finally, our first place winners, the pre-K and kindergarten first place award goes to Chloe Sutton. Yay, here comes Chloe. The first and second grade first place award goes to Gloria Ruiz. Gloria, are you here? The third and fourth grade 
First place award goes to Katie Evans. Yay, Katie. And the fifth and sixth grade first place award goes to Megan McConaughey. Is Megan here? Yay, Megan. Good job, Megan. Thank you to everyone who took part and helped to wish Snooty a happy birthday. Thanks for coming out, and thanks for all your support of the South Florida Museum. You guys have a great day. And Sudi would say thank you if he could too. Uh, he, he's the one that really gets, makes the most out of his birthday. He's going to be 66 years old on July 21st. And we're starting the celebration today with this lettuce eating contest. You might all wonder, how did we get here today? Well, I've heard three different versions of the story today. Um, but I understand that there was a little friendly competition on the night of the giving challenge at the Sarasota Community Foundation that John, between John Annis and uh, Martha Wells, and Martha's in here somewhere, and apparently John said he could eat as much as Snooty, and then Jennifer Gans, one of our judges, says, yeah, so that was in the middle of the night, I think, and he, they came up with that, correct? And then Jennifer reminded him of it the next day, and so it just kind of evolved and we appreciate everybody being a part of this whole thing so um we do have a huge celebration this weekend the um uh, snooty's birthday is um a big se community celebration it's really fun to have the entire community come together um, not only to pay tribute to snooty and the legacy he really brings in terms of caring for endangered species and the and the environment um, but it's a day to celebrate all environmental awareness, and we will have groups here from uh, Audubon Society, from um, Nature or, or the Conservation Foundation of the, of the um, uh, Gulf Coast, from um, so Science and Environmental Council, um, Bush Gardens, all sorts of groups that will be here, not only provide activities for children, but also to educate people about protecting their environment. Because really, Snooty's longevity is, uh, is uh, really due to the good care that he's had and the protection that he's had. And if the message he really brings is, is if we cared for the environment and if we cared for how we treat manatees in terms of uh, watching how, uh, how we boat um, and, and observing the, wake, the no wake zones, then manatees would live longer. And look how long he's living to almost 66 years old. He's nearly there, Marilyn, right? So um, we're excited about that, uh, the, the message that he brings and be able to share that with the public. Um, I'm also happy to report that we've had a very generous donor come to us this summer and provide a match that, so that we could try to raise $100,000 this year. And we, have, I'm, we are at $95,500 of that match. We just have 4,500 to go. So. That, that money will go to the care and feeding of manatees, not of people, but of manatees. And it does take a lot for us to, to give that care. So um, um, I would like Marilyn now to come forward and talk a little bit about manatees and not only about how they, uh, their physiology, but how they eat. So it's important. Stay tuned. Listen, okay? Hi everyone, I'm the Director of Living Collections. Uh, my name is Meryl and I want to thank the challengers for stepping up to the plate, or in this instance, the tube, so to speak, um, and taking on this challenge. You know, we do have uh, two different groups of animals here. We have, of course, Snooty, who was captive barn, and because he's so imprinted on by people, we work with Snooty very differently than we do the rehabilitation manatees that we have here. Snooty was uh, spoiled, so to speak, when he was little, and so he's very used to being hand-fed. He does know how to eat like the other manatees off of tubes and grays, but he prefers the personal attention he gets from being hand-fed. So if any of you choose that process, there are some things to keep in mind. When Snooty is hand-fed, he usually prefers to accept it core first. Uh, the advantage to that is you get a bigger <laughs> mouthful um, and you lose less lettuce in the water when you're eating that way, but it is a slower process. So there may be a, an issue of a quality versus speed. On the other side of the coin, we have the rehabilitation <laughs> manatees. And our, um, 
our hope for them is to go out in the wild and be successful. So we don't want them to have that same imprint that Snooty has, so we drop their foods in. You saw one come down to the bottom of the tank. Their tubes are sometimes weighted. They're sometimes intended to float on water, so we haven't done that to you guys. Um, but what they do, because they're smaller and they don't have the dexterity that Snooty has, they tend to use their flippers a little bit more. So you can plow through a tube pretty quickly, but keep in mind, there's a portion of that lettuce that's inside the tube. And with the wild manatees, they have to discover different ways to get those cores out with their flippers. So if you want to attempt to do that, you are welcome to do so. Um, some of them will actually take the tubes and sort of shake them to try to get the cores out. Other ones know that they can slide their flipper down the slit and bump out the cores. So you're welcome to use whichever method you're most comfortable with. Um, we actually like doing it both ways because it gives us the opportunity to show how wild manatees <coughs> need to behave when they are released and of course Snooty just because he likes being spoiled and you may like that same method as well. So please enjoy. Um, we do have backup lettuce so if you're able to plow through that first <laughs> tube, we're ready to hand you off another one. Thank you Marilyn. All right, I have the rules. Listen close John. All right. John, Which John? John, 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 John at, Megan John, and Lynn John. All right, so here, here it goes. Competitors may only use their manatee mitts, no hands. Competitors can eat wild style, face first into the, face first into the lettuce, or snooty style with a manatee care technician feeding them by hand, just like snooty likes it. Competitors will have about 10 minutes to eat and will then be ranked by judges in an overall competition as well as in specific categories. Everybody gets a prize. Oh. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to say that, but I'm telling you. I don't. <laughs> no losers here, but there is different ways to earn different prizes. All awards are final. And there are no appeals to the judge's rulings. <laughs> I do see a few bribes out there. <coughs> I, I hope you judges will ignore that. Now I'd like to introduce our judges for today. Uh, first is Jennifer Gans, here with the um, a manatee and margarita in front of her. <laughs> um, and Jackie Barron, and then Tom Tryon. So thank you all for being here. And now for our color commentary and to introduce our competitors is Art Ross, the announcer for the Bradenton Marauders. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, we had a game last week, and one of the young ladies that works in the front office came up to me in about the seventh inning. And she says, Art, I have something for you. And I have several reads in between each half inning, so it gets kind of hectic up there. So I had all these reads to go, and I said, well, just give it to me now. And she says, well, there's this lettuce eating contest that's going to take place <laughs> next week. And she starts to explain in detail about this day. And I said, Ann, I said, just put it on a piece of paper. I can't write all that right now. I've got three announcements to read before the bottom half of the inning. And I said, by the way, what's a lettuce eating contest? <laughs> and she says, I don't know, but I think it's the same thing as a hot dog eating contest. <laughs> I said, well, then good. We're right at the ball game, and I'll fit right in. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce the competitors here today. Leading off is John Annis, the Senior Vice President of Community Investment for the Community Foundation of Sarasota County. John is a retired Marine, so he knows how to handle big challenges. And so I want to ask you, John, are you ready for today? I am ready. Now that's a, mar that's a Marine talking right there. Batting second, John Horn, the owner of Anna Maria Oyster Bar, former chair of the Manatee Chamber of Commerce. Now, John, since you're in the restaurant business, you may have an unfair advantage because you probably have the most experience out of anybody in food. Well, it looks that way first. <laughs> <laughs> the problem I have is I thought I was going to get snooty today. I thought I had to eat snooty and I thought, I'm going to be sitting here on this side of the glass looking at me and saying, I don't think I can out-eat that big boy. <laughs> and so he's going to be on the other side of the glass thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, what Bryn Ann didn't fail to tell you was that the winner gets to challenge Snooty right after this. <laughs> More motivation. Batting third is 
John Ed Isham, who is the executive director of Ra Realize Bradenton. And John Ed, now I coached pro basketball for 22 years, and it says here that you have been trash talking on Facebook. Yes. And you consider yourself a contender. Can you give me an example of what you've been trash talking about? Wait, I need a cue card. <laughs> well, I'm sure you'll hold your own. <laughs> Batting fourth, Megan Jordan, health educator and media liaison for the Florida Department of Health in Manatee County. <laughs> Megan, I understand that you considered changing your name to Megan John, but you brought your boyfriend John instead. My given name is John, so... <laughs> And now you're, you're the youngest competitor, so do you think, since you have the least experience of eating, do you think that this will hinder you today, or will you use that for motivation? I think I should probably get a three-minute head start. <laughs> Bryn, that's up to you. <laughs> All right, and batting fifth, Lynn Lineman, South Florida Museum Board of Trustees. Lynn has said he'll do just about anything for this museum, and he's proving it today, but he will not consider changing his name to Lynn John. All right, so you're happy with your eating capabilities, and you, you feel good? Well, when Martha called me and said, would you represent the board in a lettuce eating contest, I said, do you think I can win this thing? And she said, no, there's not a chance. And I said, why do you want me? And she goes, all the other board members are too dignified to do this. <laughs> Well, you fit right in. <laughs> All right, Bryn. So are we right, ready to begin? Ready. ready, set, go. To get started with the judging, we're going to start by getting overall scores for each competitor. So I'm going to have the three judges come up, stand behind each competitor, and hold up your numbers to say what, what you're scoring each one so that everyone can see. Hold up your number cards right. to score John. All right, so I've got a bias here. So we're going with a ten. All right, that's wait, a 10. Wait, 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 wait. But the 20 gives him an extra 0.5. Yeah. Oh, nice. 10.5 for John Annis. And from Jackie Barron, a 7. She's the Simon Cowell of the group. OK. Very too polite. Way too community foundation of Sarasota. Oh. <laughs> and from Jennifer, a 10. Wow. Now you guys know this is all his. So we're starting off strong. 
Now for John Horn. Let's start with Mr. Tom Tryon. What is your score for, for John Horn? Well, it's a $50 gift card, by the way, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> so the nine just went to a 10. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I tried the margarita. Uh, <laughs> all right, and from Jennifer? 9.5. Pretty good. <laughs> now for Johnette Isham from Realize Bradenton. Alright, so she did have a 9.5, but she threw her lettuce. Oh, oh. points deducted. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Jackie? All right. What about the cue cards? <laughs> and a nine. Oh. Woo. Okay, and for Megan Jordan from the health department. What do we have for Megan from Tom? I'm thinking, I've never seen anybody devour. Such a young age. So I'm going 9.5. Okay, we'll call that a 9.5. <laughs> and from Jackie? Yes. <laughs> oh. And for Mr. Lynn Lineman from our own board of trustees. <laughs> three point. Oh yeah, yeah. Can I get a three in there? No. Okay. All right. I'll go nine point five with that special rate for friends. <laughs> All right, and from Jackie? And 9.5 right. for sharing his fritter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's right. I was going to give him a 10, but then I saw him do that many times, and so he gets a 10.5. Oh, nice. Okay. Well, that was close, but we do have a winner. We had a tie for second place. John Horn and Lynn Lineman both came in at 29.5. But Megan Jordan took the prize with a perfect Woo! score of 30. Good job. Good job. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. <laughs> we eat our veggies at the health department. <laughs> I'll keep working where I work. Okay, now, <laughs> <laughs> now the judges are going to have a brief conference to decide on our five other awards. All right, in no particular order, we begin with Manatee Appetite. And the winner is Megan. I don't know if that's flattering. Definitely one to frame and hang on the office wall, for sure. And for the best table manners by far, our own John Annis. You want to get out? Wild style? You should get out wild style. Oh, um, and for wild style, definitely wild style, our, our lettuce throwing John at Isham. <laughs> and any guesses? Here you go. You want this one? Okay. Any guesses who gets snooty style? John Horn, <laughs> complete with like the complete with the break in between. Even a snooty style break. Absolutely. <laughs> Dropping secrets. Yes. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And last but not least, our own Lynn Lineman, Miss Congeniality, oh, or. Ma <laughs> Well, what a show. Thank you all for being great sports we and supporting. <laughs> we, do, we have lunch for you afterwards. Um, but thank you all for being here. And our judges, our esteemed judges, I'd love to give everybody a round of applause. 
We, we like to learn and have fun here at the museum, and we appreciate everybody's participation in that. So um, go forth, eat more lettuce, Snooty would say, right? And thank you to Art for being our announcer. We really appreciate it. The color commentary was terrific. Thanks. All right. Thank Cheerleaders were awesome. Everything, everything. Thanks so much, everybody. I came and I watched Snooty eat for a couple of days. I knew that Snooty just puts his face down and goes. The other manatees just put their face down and go. And I decided if I didn't participate in the negative down talk, if I just put my face down and ate the lettuce, I could take first place. Snooty's 66, that's very, very old for a manatee. We do believe at the health department one of the reasons Snooty's been able to live so long is because he's had such a healthy diet with so many leafy greens. We'd like to encourage everybody to go forward and eat more salad. Well, it all started with, um, during the giving challenge, John Annis from the Community Foundation of Sarasota, who did end up being one of our competitors, um, was joking about how he could match Snooty head for head of lettuce. And Jennifer Gantz, one of our museum supporters and donors, was, were th was there. Um, and so it, it was just kind of a joke that was a running joke for a little while. And then we decided, you know what, that sounds like a great idea. But let's bring the community into it. So we brought in more competitors. And we really just wanted the opportunity to raise awareness for the manatees, for our manatee care here at the museum, as well as, of course, for Snooty's birthday bash this Saturday. This was more of an awareness raiser than a fundraiser. We do have a matching campaign going on right now. We have a great donor who um, altogether pledged $50,000 in matching funds for Manatee Care. So we're hoping to raise $100,000 from the community between her $50,000 match and what we raise. So that, that is part of it, raising awareness for that, because it can cost up to $75,000 a year to pay just for the food bill, not to mention veterinary care and all of the water maintenance and life support that we do. So that is part of it, but this was really more for people to get to know a little bit more about manatees, how they eat, how we care for them, and um, that Snooty's birthday bash is coming up. Well, I understand that this idea came to pass at the Sarasota <laughs> Community Foundation. Uh, the, the Community Foundation did a challenge to the community called the Giving Challenge. And Martha Wells went down to visit John uh, Annis and the staff down there and thank them for all they do for the community. And they got talking about our manatee uh, program called uh, Carrie's Match for the Manatees. And that's when John decided that he could eat as much lettuce as Snooty and provided that challenge. And Martha took the ball and ro ran with it. And we have a great opportunity to share with the community more about um, our, our work here at the museum. It does. I mean, I, we have to really respect these wonderful animals, the manatees that live in our habitat here, right, near, right offshore. And what better way than to, to as you uh, say, bring fun to the community, to um, have a little challenge that gets people thinking about what do manatees really eat? Well, they aren't eating lettuce out in the, in the uh, ocean. They're eating the plants that live out there in the water that we need to protect. We need to keep it clean and we need to keep our boating safe. And that's how an other animals out there in the wild will live as long as Snooty. And that's really the message. So this Saturday we have three or four or five thousand people coming together to celebrate with Snooty. We have uh, lots of activities, lots of environmental organizations sharing how they help educate people about the environment. And we hope you'll come. It was a great event. I mean, anything we can do to bring people so they know about the manatees. I mean, the, these poor guys are getting run over all the time. They're, they, they have a rough life. Well, all of them except Snooty. Snooty's got the life everybody dreams to be. But now I've got a, a replica of Snooty, so I'm real proud of that. But real proud to bring the awareness to Snooty and to the museum. It was awesome. It was a lot of fun. Well, you know, I think if you're going to have to eat romaine, if you're going to have to eat healthy, dip in a margarita. And there's nothing better than a good fresh margarita, which... Wait, I think there's still some romaine in there. So, yep, I just dipped it in margarita and it all went down better. Some people say a spoonful of sugar, I say dip it in margarita. Well, it's not just about manatee awareness. I mean, the museum brings, I mean, it brings kids. I remember coming when I was in fifth grade, and that was not yesterday, by the way. But it gives a chance for a lot of people to learn about our area, our heritage, and definitely about Snooty. So it's, it's invaluable to our community. It's been here forever. It'll be here forever. So come and see it.
you know what? It'll probably take a year before I even think about eating lettuce again. So maybe in a year I'll consider it. Thanks so much. You know, my strategy was to bring my Realize Bradenton team. They were great cheerleaders. We had cue cards, and Jeremy was my lettuce handler. And I got to tell you, I haven't had lettuce in two months just for today. And you know, like Megan Jordan said from the health department, eat more lettuce, be healthy, support snooty. So teamwork. So I have my cheerleaders here. And, and Morgan, held, Morgan, Morgan held the cue cards because I can't remember anything. Jeremy was my feeder. We've got two beautiful staff people cheering us on as cheerleaders. We, we worked all day on this to perfect our teamwork to support Snooty and the South Florida Museum. Okay, side wins, pretend you like each other. It's like the rugby team at the end. Can we hate the champ? <laughs> Thank you.